Hi folks, welcome back to the Fab Forums. On last week's episode, I finished up some stuff on the twin turbo car, mainly interior stuff, just getting that thing ready to drive. On this week's episode, I really wanna get back on the Bibster, start knocking some of that stuff out, get that rear section closer to done. Uh, I've got a couple ideas of some other stuff I wanna do, so I wanna kinda of play with around with those as well. So yeah, let's, uh, let's get to work. So one of the things I've done that I haven't really showed or talked about in a while is my, my ultra large certi flat welding table. So I drug that thing out in the middle of the shop, which is really where I wanted it to be the entire time. It's just been kind of tucked away in a corner with some stuff on it. So I finally cleaned it up, drug it out in the middle of the shop, got it set up to work off of, and man, is that thing useful. I, I didn't realize how much I would like it until I actually used it. It is a perfect working space. I actually really, really love it right there. And I'd mentioned in past videos, I didn't have a tubing roller, a roll bender, you know, a roll bender. So I went and bought me one of those two. Just picked me one up at Harbor Freight, and then I've already ordered the swag off-road upgrades for it. But it actually worked really well for what I needed to do in this video. So what I'm doing is I rolled one long piece, uh, mainly because you kind of lose a little bit on each end. And if I cut them in size, then I lose a little bit on both ends versus I just roll it in one long piece and I only lose two ends versus four ends. So the, the idea is I'm gonna cut this in half once I kind of get the shape that I want. And one tube will go here, one tube will go there. And the other thing is too, is I know they, match exactly because it was one continuous roll. So it looks looking pretty good. Now obviously this would be just a little bit lower because it's going to tie into this tube and this would be in a little bit as it ties into that tube. But it's going to give me that 30s, 30s trunk look. Um, I don't think I'm going to take the sheet metal all the way over to here. I don't know yet. i got to figure it out. But like I've said in my past videos, I want to kind of expose these uh, rear coilovers and some of this cantilever stuff. Just to keep people guessing. And be like, it's got coilovers. How did he lower it? So anyway, that's a good start. We'll cut it in half and then kind of see where we're at.
All right, so I got the back tubes bent and mounted, or at least tacked in. So just got them tacked down here, and then up top, they're notched, but not tacked yet, mainly because I'm gonna cut these off right there. I just got a, a ratchet strap kind of holding it all in. So that's, that's basically what I wanted uh, to start with, but, So if we had a panel on it, that's kind of what we'd have. Uh, I'd probably put a little shape in it this way, but I mean, for the most part, that's what I'd have if I just put a panel right on the tubes. And like I said, this is gonna come out, probably go down and around, and then maybe do you know, some kind of doodad like that. One problem is, is it's not quite high enough. So it doesn't look too bad. I mean, it kind of has that, kind of that 30s look without being, you know, exactly like the 30s, but I don't really like this gap right here. So what I think I'm gonna do, is I'm gonna make a piece of sheet metal that comes up like this and then it breaks over and it'll give me something to attach this panel to. And then as it comes down, it'll kind of taper down to what you know this tube is here. So then when it gets to the bottom, it'll be just as you see it. But as it goes up, it'll kind of raise up. It'll also give me the ability to kind of have a flat spot up here. I'd, I'd like to have kind of a shelf, maybe like a three or four inch shelf before it kind of tapers off. And because it's gonna have a piece of sheet metal here, um, and it'll be visible because I'm not going to continue it all the way over. I'm going to leave it notched out for this stuff here. It'll allow me to put some dimple dies in it, kind of give it a little bit of character, um, you know, make it look like it has some kind of structure behind there. So that's what I'm going to start working on right now is that, that piece of sheet metal, kind of get it broke over, go ahead and put those dimple dies in there and then see what it looks like. I think it'll look good though. So I took a piece of cardboard, actually a piece of RAM board, and uh, got the radius of the tube. So that's the radius of the tube there. And I came down three quarters of an inch, which would be the center of the tube. So I want the sheet metal at least to go that far and give me a, a place to mount it. And then um, I kind of marked where the, the back panel comes in. And I've kind of roughly put in where I want those dimple dies to be. And this is relatively straight. So now what I want to do is I want to kind of get this arc that kind of comes down and meets back up over here. So the way I'm going to do that is just took some string, got a bolt in the table, and I just kind of guessed them on the radius. And what I'll do is I'll just kind of line it up on this side where I want it. I'll fasten it with some tape, and then I'll just kind of move this other side. Until I get what I want, just like that. Now I'll just trim it out and uh, kind of make sure that it has the shape that I want on the car. And then we'll just draw it on some sheet metal. Go ahead and knock two of those out. Go ahead and put the dimple dies in it. Get that edge broke. Probably use the uh, tipping die on the ink, on the on the bead roller. Kind of tip that thing over, shrink it a little bit, and we'll have a flange. A couple cleat goes. We can kind of see where we're at.
I'm rocking. All right, so kind of got the basic shape that I want. Um, just a basically bent flange. And let's see. So. Now, what I want to do is put uh, put some dimple dies in this thing. Probably seen this before. It's been a while though. Got a little dimple die set up. So I got these dimple dies here. These are punch and flare. No, pun yeah, punch and flare. So it's basically a dimple die setup. Um, they will also punch the hole with this little piece as you use it. Now these are usually used just with an impact wrench. Uh, with a bolt, you can just put a bolt in it and then use an impact wrench and it'll kind of clamp it together and punches the hole and flares it. What I like to use those is hydraulic setup. You've seen this thing before. I just made an adapter here that basically is just like the bolt, except for you don't use an impact wrench, you just use this cylinder and it kind of squeezes it and does the work for you. So let's do that. Punch some flares in this thing. I've already done the other side. And then uh, we'll kind of dry fit it on the car and see, see what we're after, see what we're working with. Number uno. See, it just punches out these little, you just put a guide hole in it basically and then it punches the rest out. So, so that's kind of the idea with that. And then put the faux panel back on here. Let's see. Better, I think. Like it with just this smaller lip, and then I uh, also kind of dig the speed holes exposed. Now I have to build a flange that kind of comes out and does something like that. So, what I'll do is kind of come back to that. Uh, a little bit. I'll just kind of Clico that thing to that tubing for now and uh, start working on some of this outer section. Maybe even kind of roll that panel because I want to put just a little tiny bit of shape in it. But while I have 
this uh, punch and flare die out, what I want to do is, I think I'm going to make a center support for the windshield. Um, just come right down through the center right here, but I want it to be full of punch and flares or yeah, whatever you want to call those things. So I've actually got a piece of steel right here. Just going to put it in the brake and kind of break a couple, break the edges and then we'll punch some holes in the center and kind of do a test fit to see, see if I like it. Maybe too wide. That's the only thing I'm really concerned about, but uh, take a look and see. What do you think about it? What do you think about it? So drop me a comment. What do you think about that center brace on the windshield? I know where I stand. I'm not gonna tell you what I think right now. You let me know what you think. So tell me what you think, but this is the deal. Um, your opinion can't be qualified by safety, like visibility, because it's a hot rod. Like it's not gonna have the most, it's not gonna be the most safe thing. It's not gonna have the best visibility. So you gotta kind of take that out of the equation. And uh, the windshield doesn't really need a brace, I don't think, because of the way that it's curved. It's not gonna really need much of a brace, I don't think. And even if it did, we could probably make something a little bit smaller. So anyway. Taking out those two factors, don't worry about visibility, don't worry about the windshield needing it, just aesthetics. What's your vote? Yes or no? You know what? I think I've thought about it long enough. I don't like it. So it's probably not gonna stay. I'll leave it there right now just so I can kind of see it over and over for the next little bit but I really don't think it's gonna stay. Anyway, back to this section. Let's, uh, let's turn this ram board into some sheet metal and we'll stick it in the roller. Kind of roll it a little bit and see what we got.
All right, guys, there you go. More progress on the Bibster. I would like to say, so I get a lot of, you know, I get a lot of people really wanting to know when this thing is going to be done. And that kind of question is really hard to answer on a project like this. You just can't determine that. And I don't really want to rush it, like I've said in past videos. And something like this takes way longer than most people think. I mean, for instance, for every minute of video you see, I probably got at least an hour or two hours worth of work that go into just producing that one minute. So, you know, 20 minute video, it's 20 hours worth of work that week producing enough content just to make a 20 minute video. It's very, very slow going. These projects are, they're really unknown. It's uncharted territory. You're not just sliding bolts in stuff and tightening it up. I mean, you're really working from scratch. Anyway, so that being said, I don't want to rush it. I have no intentions of getting this thing done super fast. Um, I mean, really, I encourage you guys to enjoy the journey of the build versus just having it done and then be over, right? I mean, then I'd start on something else and then you'd wonder why it's not done yet. Hope you enjoyed that. Hope you dig the new look, the kind of look I'm after. I know this whole process is, is kind of me showing you what my vision is and a lot of people have an idea of what I'm going to do and then uh, ends up not being what they thought it was going to be or maybe it is I don't know so hope you dig that hope you dig the look how it's transforming it's kind of looking really want that old school 30s coupe model a coupe uh, look but modernized you know like my version the modern day version of that so kind of tie in those those kind of small features in with the modern day fox body and some some crazy suspension and that sort of thing Let's talk, let's talk about schedule this year. One of the things I wanna do in 2020 is obviously I wanna kinda of make more progress on this thing, not necessarily rush to get it done, but a lot more progress. I wanna kinda of move a little faster on the channel. I also wanna get it out so everybody can see it, whether it's done or not. In the midst of the build, I wanna get it out this year and get it seen. Um, traveling to some events, that's, that's part of what I wanna do. And the first one coming up is at the end of March. It's Ponies in the Smokies. I've been there before. I've had this thing there before. I will be there this March, end of March. Um, we'll have this and another ride, a little guest surprise ride that we're going to bring with it. Uh, I encourage you, if you're anywhere near Gatlinburg, um, Pigeon Forge, uh, Ponies in the Smokies is actually, I think, just north of Pigeon Forge. I'll drop you a link in the description. You can go check them out. Ponies in the Smokies. If you're into Mustangs or you just want to come see this thing, go check them out. Make that trip. Um, you can kind of make it into a family trip. That's what I'm going to do. We're going to take the kids up there. We're going to stay at a water park and then do this, do this kind of thing as well. So into March, come see me. Come see the Bibster. Hopefully, uh, it will be more done than it is now. I hope to I got some things I think I can get finished before then. But uh, yeah, come check it out. Come put your hands on it. Come see me. That's what you're into. And uh, enjoy, enjoy the Smoky Mountains. All right, folks, that's all I got for you this week. Hope you enjoyed that. I'll see you guys next week. Go do work, son. Mm -hmm.